this we don't know yet. I mean, I don't think that we are in a position to to um, to declare here that this was simply a facade. Then we would be uh, working against the whole idea of the process. The idea is that a member state is given a chance. And then now is the time for evaluation. And as we very clearly said, all four of us, we don't think that Hungary is removing um, the, the breaches of the rule of law with these very partly implemented measures that, that are now under scrutiny. So uh, this is more a semantic thing. If this, you have to ask the Hungarian government and Prime Minister Orban what is their real intention and will. And you already know what his answer will be, of course. But we can only look at the facts on the ground, and the facts on the ground are such that clearly the council should now freeze or cut funding for Hungary. And, and I might as well add that what I think is the most important thing at the moment as we are here is to make this conditionality regulation to sort of like to hammer it with big nails on the ground and make it stay there. And that's done by following up and, and, uh, and making sure that it's actually used and not just given Hungary a free pass now at this moment. So this is the most important thing at hand. And then if that is done in December by the Council, then we have really achieved something because then we have a first case. And the member states know that this is a real thing, that the Council is actually cutting funds from a member state, which never, ever have a, happened before. So I think that all this talk about whether they are putting on a facade right now or something, it is pretty much irrelevant at the moment. It doesn't help us, you know, uh, in, in, our, in our historical task now to make sure that this regulation is actually used and the conditionality mechanism is actually in place in the European Union. And then it can be expanded from there to other fields as well, and, and to solidify the use in the rule of law.